Tonight, we are going to be talking about Laravel local development, four ways explained. All right, we have a special guest. I'm really excited. His name is Philippe Floor. This is our GPUG January uh, meetup of 2021. All right, kicking the year off well. All right, so let us, oh, let's go talk about our agenda. All right, uh, so I'm going to do a welcome, which I just did. So this has already happened. We're gonna do some introductions. I'm gonna talk about a little bit about Philippe and then in his presentation, he talks a little bit about himself as well. I'm gonna do a word about our sponsors, just give some thanks to uh, the people that helped make this happen. Uh, then Philippe is gonna do his presentation. All right, moving on. All right, so uh, we're, thank you to our sponsors. First, I wanna thank Vehicle for their sponsorship of the GPUG over the years. Uh, they've been a great supporter and you know, give me the time to work on the GPUG and as well, when we were meeting together, gave us the location, the food, those sorts of things. Really looking forward to the end of this year when we can get back together again. All right. Maybe, maybe, maybe we'll have a social in August. Here's hoping. All right. Also, I'd like to thank Givelify. Uh, Givelify is uh, providing us the Zoom technology so that we can actually host this online. So they are our hosts when we are virtual. So thanks again, Givelify for making that happen. We couldn't do it as well without you. So thanks again. All right. So our speaker tonight is Philippe Flor. He's a Brazilian rocket scientist uh, turned, turned software developer. Uh, that's about all I know about him. Uh, he's, he's a really good guy. Uh, worked with him for a couple of years now, uh, really excited. And he's uh, he's really smart as well, which you can tell because he's a he's actually a rocket scientist, right? <laughs> uh, aeronautical engineer, but uh, it's, yeah. Close, yeah. it's the same thing. It's, the same thing. <laughs> it's slightly right. different. But... <laughs> All right, moving on, moving on. And I'm going to hand things over to Philippe. Philippe, you ready? Yep, uh, I'm okay. going to share my screen and then. All right, so thanks, Colin. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be sharing today uh, four different ways that I've learned um, on how to set up a Laravel development environment. Even though I mentioned Laravel in here because those approaches are very focused towards Laravel, you can 100% use them for any other PHP-based uh, application as well, if you want to. And yep, so as Colin was saying, I, I also had a, a introduction to slide uh, my name. I'm a developer at Vehicle. I've been working um, here for almost three years now. Absolutely love my job. And one of the things that we do here is we work a lot with Laravel. So honestly, it, it's, it's one of my passions and I'm really happy that Vehicle has give, given me like the space to present this today as well. So thanks guys. And I hope that by the end of this presentation, if if anyone here could get anything new at all, that's that makes this presentation worth it. And uh, hopefully this is going to happen. The agenda for today is going to be very simple. I'm gonna go over four very popular ways for you to set up a development environment for your Laravel project. And I'm going to explain how to set that up, but, and also why you would consider uh, use, using that approach, right? So each approach has advantages and disadvantages. So I don't wanna, this presentation will not be one that's gonna say, you know what, you should always use sale and that's it, because I don't think that's how things work. And another goal as well is going to be to, I'm gonna try to break the magic apart because I think there is a lot to take from this if we understand part of the inner workings of these um, tools that are being offered to us. Um, Laravel is very strong towards this idea of facilitating uh, development for us, making our lives easier, right? And I, uh, it's it's pretty awesome. Like if you actually look into like what is happening behind, it's. It, it makes a lot of sense. So we're gonna go over that as well. Cool, so let's just uh, get started. And I'm gonna start with the PHP artisan serve. I think anyone that has worked with Laravel has probably used this at one point uh, in their life. 
And this is gonna be pretty, pretty simple to use. But to demonstrate how to, to serve those different applications, what I, what I did set up in here was a very simple Laravel project. Uh, I have the project open in here. And if you take a look, it's not just collapse this. It's just a very simple demo project. And it literally was just um, a brand new Laravel project. And then I ran Laravel Breeze. And for those that don't know what Laravel Breeze is, it's just a bootstrapping tool for you to have authentication routes uh, and as well as uh, Tailwind CSS fully configured for you. So it actually sets up this login route. And if I log in here, I just, I just added a reason to have a database. So I just showed the list of users and that's it. That's what this app is. So it's, it's a very simple app that relies on a database connection. And if you take a look at this URL, you're gonna see that I'm, I'm serving at localhost 8000 because in this initial demonstration, all I'm doing is I just ran PHP arts and serve and that's it. Can, can everyone see the terminal just fine? Is this, is this readable? Yeah, so, it's perfect. Awesome, all right, that's sweet. So yeah, I just to show the website, I decided to start right away with Arts and Serve uh, running. But if you take a look here at the presentation, one thing that I want to highlight is that PHP Arts and Serve is not like this magical thing that does miracles. At the end of the day, you can do the same thing without doing this by just doing PHP uh, serve over, over localhost port 8000 with the root being the public folder of that Laravel project. So if, if you don't have a Laravel project uh, set up and you just wanna quickly start a, a server using PHP, you can always just run this command over here. Of course, like choose whatever part and you're gonna be good to go. But going back to PHP Arts and Serve, a thing that I think it's pretty awesome about it is that you can do this with the PHP one as well, but let's focus on Arts and Serve now. You can specify the port and, and the host name as well, which a thing that I like to do, which is not like strictly necessary, but I can go over here and I can say PHP artisan serve dash dash port 80. So this is gonna fail by the way, because to set to port 80, you need to have pseudo uh, privileges, but I'm just gonna try running here real quick. And the host is going to be artisan.demo, right? And if I run this, I'm gonna fail because I don't have pseudo. So I'm just gonna pseudo that. And now I'm serving over artisan.demo. And if I access the page, there we go. So now I have a named website being served over PHP artisan serve, right? Cool. I've mentioned early that, earlier that this website relies on a database connection. Um, I, I like to use PHP Arts and Serve for quick, quick prototypes. And in my opinion, like the easiest way for you to have like a quick database just to get going is to use SQLite. So if you go back to the project, you're gonna see over here that compared to the dot, dot dot example that starts with a MySQL uh, setup, I just, deleted everything and went for SQLite as my connection. And if you wanna use SQLite, all you have to do is go to your database folder and create a file called database.sqlite. You don't actually need to memorize this. If, you, if you're not sure what it, where, where you need to point that, you can always just check under the config folder under the database.php and you're gonna see that for SQLite, the database is going to be under the database folder in a file called database.sqlite. And that's it, that's, that's the default value. You can point to any, anywhere else, but if you don't specify it, that's, that's where the file is gonna be located. So now, yeah, so that's, that's pretty much it. Like I'm just serving with PHP Arts and Serve. I don't have too much to talk about PHP Arts and Serve because um, it's a very straightforward command. There isn't like too much, too many things to, to worry about. But um, another thing that I wanna point out is that if for some reason, let's say your project doesn't use eloquent, uh, eloquent models to interact with the database and you definitely need to, need to have this project running on MySQL. So a thing that I could recommend is that if you, if you are using uh, Mac 
to do your development, you could check out DB Engine and being 100% transparent here. I didn't know DB Engine was a thing until I started preparing for this presentation. And if you take a look at the Laravel docs for Laravel Valet, yeah, it's in Laravel Valet that they, they, they recommend you to use this service. And honestly, I tried that out and it works great. It's, it's amazing. It actually has all the services that you need. So in here, for example, I just created a service for my SQL await, but I could just as easily quickly ramp up a Postgres, uh, data, a Postgres service or Redis service and get going with it. And also the uh, DB engine was, is being maintained by the same people behind Table Plus. So it has like a nice integration from the get-go with Table Plus. And um, okay, so if I start this database and okay, the database is running and then I double click on it, you're gonna see that Table Plus has opened over that database and I'm good to go. So what I'm gonna do now just to demonstrate is I'm gonna change that environment to actually use this MySQL connection. So I'm just gonna quickly create in here a new database. I'm gonna call this demo, whatever. It's just for a demonstration. And okay, we have the database good to go. And I could use root, but like best practices suggest that like you should probably create a user that can't do too much. So I'm just gonna go over here to connection, user management, and I'm gonna create a new user that I'm gonna call demo. And the password is gonna be secret. And I'm not gonna give any global privileges to this user. I'm just gonna say that on the demo database, you can do anything and that's it. That's all this user can do. It can just interact with the demo database. Cool. Now this database, uh, this database and the user exist. I just used Table Plus to set that up. And now we need to wire this in um, in, in our Laravel project. So how, do, how am I going to do this? I'm just going to go over here. Uh, what is the dot .env dot .example? Gonna copy this as a starting point. Okay, and sorry, just gonna stop this. All right, so I'm just gonna point you to the database, which is demo. The username was also demo. And the password was secret, and that should be good for us. Oh, and, and this, this is pretty cool, right? It actually detected that the environment was modified. I think this is brand new because as far as I remember, I thought I, I would have to cancel PHP Artisan Serve and then reserve it after changing the environment. Does anyone know if this is like brand new or not? I can I can attest to the same surprise. So I'm, I'm pretty sure it's it's very, it's gotta be new. Yeah, yeah. pretty sweet, huh? I, I did, literally, I just found out this now. <laughs> 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 that, that's, that's very awesome. All right, so I'm just gonna go over here. And of course, since we're relying on a database, I'm just gonna say PHP artisan, migrate, dash dash seed. And all right, cool. Uh, oh, by the way, if anyone is curious, like my, my seeder is just like pretty straightforward. I just spin up 20, 26 users. I spin up this one guy that has this email over here and then I spin up 25 more just so we can have something to see on that page. But okay, so if I go now into this and I refresh and you should see that the app is still working just fine. Cool. So that's it. Now we're using MySQL for this connection as opposed to SQLite. Uh, all right, so going back to the presentation. And all right, so just gonna go out more. And okay, so what about HTTPS, right? Like, can you easily serve a PHP Artisan serve um, page with uh, SSL? I don't know a, an easy way. I actually did some research on this and what I, what I found is that people that need to do that, they rely on ngrok. So they just proxy, um, they just use like the 
and Grok to kind of do a proxy connection using SSL and that's it. Uh, to be 100% honest, whenever my projects need SSL in, for development, I just go with one of the other approaches that I'm gonna be covering. And in this presentation, I'm gonna show you how to set up SSL with the other approaches. Um, and why should you care about uh, having SSL in, in your development environment? It's because some, some services, like some uh, APIs uh, in the browser can only be used if you have a secure connection. So for example, you cannot access the webcam of the computer in Chrome if you don't have a secure connection. I guess like with Google Chrome, there is a slight exception. If you go into developer configurations, you can allow this to happen on localhost. But uh, if, you wanna, if you want to safely be able to test your local, your application, your local environment in any browser, and that application relies on things that require secure connection, then it's nice for your local environment to have secure connection from the get go. And that's why I'm, I wanna focus on that as well. In the case of PHP Arts and Serve, what I know is that people use ngrok to just proxy into it. Um, so I, I, I can demonstrate how to do that. So I'm just gonna cancel this thing over here. I'm gonna do PHP Arts and Serve. I'm serving this over port 8000. And then in another terminal, I'm just gonna say ngrok. Oh, for those that don't know, and the whole point of ngrok is just that you are exposing a local connection to the internet. So ngrok offers like a very easy way for you to share your website with other people. Just say like, hey, look how cool. That's that's one thing that I'm doing. What do you think, right? That's that's the whole point of ngrok. So I'm just gonna say like, hey, I wanna do an ngrok uh, for the connection on port 8000. Oh, it's um, TLDR. And grok. I think I have to pass a flag that I don't remember. Oh yeah. Okay, so it's just TCP. So we're gonna say and grok TCP over eight thousand, and it's going to not work because I don't know why. Wait, I think you won HTTP and not not TCP. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay, my bad. HTTP on eight thousand. You Oops. did HTTP. There you go. Yeah. I I don't know why it's the TCP. Okay, so. And you can see that now we're serving the our local host 8000 through ngrok on this secure connection over here. So if I go there, and yeah, and you can see like as I don't have too much experience on that, I saw people mentioning like maybe I'm missing something in here. I, I don't have too much experience with like proxying through ngrok, but when I've googled for that, one of the suggestions was using that, and you can see that the connection should be secure. Just gonna force this it's not showing but I, I don't see the the little thing in here but i don't see the complaint either so i guess it is secure but yeah like if you want to set up https there is another way that i think it's better and i'm gonna show that at this point we finished the the explanation for um php arts and serve and now there is the So now I'm going to explain about Laravel Valet, right? And a couple of uh, a couple of things that I want to give a heads up is that Laravel Valet only works on Mac because it relies on Homebrew to do a lot of things. And the biggest downside, in my opinion, is that Laravel Valet leaves like it it modifies your your system. It actually installs Nginx, and Nginx is going to be running there and installs DNS mask, and that's gonna be running there. And it also uh, uses all the dot .test domains. So it's, it's just a thing to keep in mind. Like uh, that's one of the reasons why I usually don't use Valet, but I, I do like Valet a lot. And there is a lot of value behind it, but I really want to emphasize those heads up. So I'm gonna continue. In, in regards to setting up Valet, is if you have homebrew on your machine, just compose your global require, uh, Laravel Valet, and then you do Valet install and the thing handles itself from there on. Uh, I have Valet installed in this computer, but um, I've stopped Valet on purpose. So I'm just going to go to the terminal and I'm going to, to just run Valet start. And it's sudo. 
And you're going to see that's going to start all those services for me. And yeah, like um, Valet also has the same downside uh, of uh, PHP Artisan Serve, which is your host machine needs to have those services that your application needs, right? So I'm going to keep that uh, MySQL service running because we can still use it for our, for our test. And okay, so now I have uh, Valet running. And if I do Valet links, I can see all the websites that I have available. In this case, I have none. And okay, so if you want to serve a website, there is two approaches with Valet. You can do Valet Park, and that's going to automatically link all the websites in projects that are like subdirectories of this, this folder that you're on right now. I don't usually use Park. I, I personally always use Link, which is it's just going to link the one folder that you're on to an, to, to a, um, an URL. So I'm just going to do Valet Link right here. And you're going to see that now the demo website has been um, served. And if I repeat, if I repeat the valid links, you're gonna see that demo.test is available, right? So if I go here, I can see now that demo.test is being served just fine. And I should be able to log in with that uh, user as before. Thanks. Um, so I'm just gonna enter presentation mode again. And that's the user email going to go back to, to the browser, secret, and you can see that the website is still working fine. All right, so a couple of things that I think it's pretty nice about Valet is that it, because it's using Homebrew, it allows you to quickly switch versions of PHP. So you can use Valet use, point to a version of PHP. And if you don't have that PHP installed, it's just going to use Homebrew to install that version and then change the symbolic links so you can be serving your website with that version. And it also has a nice integration with um, ngrok, I believe, which allows you to share a website. So I can just say Valet share demo. And yeah, it's ngrok. So you can see that I'm serving that website through ngrok. And then I can just send that to my friends and they're gonna be able to access the website wherever they are. I'm gonna cancel that and go back to the presentation. So like, as you could see, like in the PHP Artisan Serve, like setting up HTTPS, it can be a challenge, right? So it's probably gonna be very difficult with Valet as well, right? Uh, actually, it's super easy, barely an inconvenience, because if you want to serve with SSL, all you need to do is just do Valet Secure and you point to the website and it's, and it's good to go. So I'm just gonna mention it here. Uh, Valet secure demo, and you're gonna see that Valet is gonna is going to enable SSL for that site. And now, if I if I go to that website, you're gonna see that like it's accepting SSL now. So I'm just gonna click in there, and there you go. It's a secure connection, as you can see over here. So again, if you if you want to if you want to access webcams or things like that. You, you can easily set up SSL with Valet. All right, so I'm going to go back to the presentation. Okay, so that's that's Valet done. Oh yeah, a quick thing that I think it's important for you to know in regards to Valet is that if you just run the command, because like I'm not covering all the commands since I'm, I wanna kind of like show other approaches as well. But if, if you're new to Valet and you wanna see the commands, you can just run Valet by itself. And it's going to show you everything that you can do with a nice explanation next to it. So it's pretty neat. It's it's very user friendly for you to use. I have a, a question actually, Philippe. And I'm mm -hmm. there's probably one of those big commands there. <laughs> but one of the things that I sometimes want to know is like what version of PHP is actually being used. Do you happen to know, or does anybody happen to know if there's a valet command for that? Because what I've used in the past is just brew services list to see which FPM it is. But mm. I, I'm not sure if Valet has that built in. Yeah, I'm not sure either. Uh, does anyone know? Not I, I recently added a an option for that. Uh, if you just type Valet use, it'll tell you which PHP version is in use. Oh, oh really? that is awesome. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, oh 
That is, <laughs> oh, that's oh, that is sweet. Thank you. <laughs> that's that's awesome. Um, cool. All right. So now we're gonna go to Homestead. So I think before I start talking about Homestead, I think it's important for us to know what is the difference between a virtual machine and a container, because pretty much like I like to compare Homestead with Sail. Those are like if you want to use Docker containers, you go for Sail. If you want to use virtual machines, you're gonna go to Homestead, and each one has their merits. Um, I've tend to prefer Docker containers nowadays, but um, the thing that you need to know about virtual machines is that it's the only thing that you're virtualizing for a virtual machine is the hardware. So the, the system that is running there is like, an, it's a full emulation of a real system and it has its own kernel and it only works like that. It's you're simulating the whole computer inside of your, if you're inside of your system. And one advantage uh, on that is that that system that you created with that, like that system that you're hosting, like on that virtual machine is more isolated from your main computer, right? Like your host computer. Um, containers, on the other hand, the, the abstraction is not on the hardware level. It's actually on the kernel level. So like the, um, your, con your Docker containers are gonna be using the kernel of your host machine. So as opposed to in a in Homestead, your, your applications in there would use the kernel of their own OS that is running on that virtual machine. That, that's not the case with containers. Containers have has like a translation layer. Like, I don't know if that's, that would be the name for it because there's, but just bear with me. But yeah, like it's, you're, you're using the kernel of your host machine. The, the advantage behind containers is that they are much lighter. Um, and it gives you more customization in regards to, to how you're gonna uh, set up your system. Uh, another thing as well that I wanna point out is that if you're using Docker containers, one thing that uh, a lot of people like to do is that they can deploy their website using those Docker containers, um, as opposed to the approach of a virtual machine that technically you can use that, but it's not as common to see. Um, when, once you get to Laravel SAIL, I'm gonna be going over this deployment part again because you can't use Laravel SAIL for deployment, but we're gonna cross that bridge when we get there. Um, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. But so what is Homestead? Homestead is nothing more than a virtual machine that is tailored to work really well with Laravel. So it has everything that your Laravel app might need. It, it comes up with like a lot of helpful scripts that allows you to change the version of PHP that you're using. It comes up with MySQL, Redis, like Nginx, like everything is ready to go there. Okay, so how do you set up Homestead? Hopefully everything is cached in here, so it's not gonna take too long to download the, the, the OS. But yeah, let's let's take a look at that. So, and because we're done with the things that, that require the host machine to have those services, what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna shut down that database that we created in here, just so we can guarantee that we are only using those databases that are inside of either the VM for Homestead or the Docker containers for sale. So we no longer have MySQL enabled. I'm also going to um, stop Valet. So I'm just gonna go over here, Valet stop. Go, and now we're good to go with Homestead. So whoop, that's Composer, require, Laravel. Oh, oh yeah, I am in presentation mode, okay. Laravel Homestead. Okay, and now to, to create the Homestead YAML and uh, set up that, I'm just gonna go to vendor bin Homestead and then I'm gonna run the make command. Like this, all this, everything that I mentioned by the way is 
very well documented in the Laravel docs, which another thing that I love about working with Laravel is that those docs are amazing. Like the best docs that I've I've seen pretty much. It's so well written, so easy to navigate. So yeah, everything that I'm doing here, you can easily see on the Laravel docs. But okay, so if we take a look at that Homestead YAML, this is where we're gonna configure um, this uh, virtual machine that's gonna be spin up. So all I'm going to do here is let's just change the website. So I'm gonna call this Homestead demo just to follow the same standards as I did for the Vagrant, or for the PHP Arts on Serve one. The database, I'm gonna call demo again, just so I, I have less work to do on the, on the environment file and I'm gonna use MySQL. So the, the MySQL prompt appearing here, I think this is new because as far as I know, like not long ago, like MySQL came by default and if you wanted to have other things in here, you would have to flip those flags. Um, but now it's good to see that MySQL is just a dedicated flag in here now as well. And but yeah, so because we're gonna be using MySQL, I'm gonna enable that. And that should be everything that we need to do. So I'm just gonna run Vagrant up and that's gonna start spinning up that machine. Uh, I should have that in cache. So I don't think it's gonna take too long. I'm gonna cancel PHP Arts and Surf. And one thing that you're gonna need to do as well is that as you can see here on your Homestead YAML, you, you have an IP address where that machine is gonna be, the address that's gonna be, that's gonna be having that machine in there. So I just want to set up my ETC hosts. Oh, Vim. <laughs> um, and you can see over here that I already did that before. But yeah, just, just make sure that you need to see hosts, you're referencing that IP address to the website that you're hosting inside of Homestead, because then that's gonna allow you to easily just go to that website in the browser and everything is gonna be working fine for you. So I'm just gonna go back in here, leave it. And if you take a look in here, it's okay. So it's provisioning. Uh, it's not gonna take uh, too long after this. Why this thing is happening, another thing that I wanna mention as well in regards to Homestead is that if you want to do some additional tailoring or like uh, tweaks to your machine, you can always just add that on your after sh script and you can do whatever you need in here. So for example, in a project where I was working on, my team wanted to do some special configurations on Nginx and all we did was add those um, tweaks to the configuration in here. And okay, so it's it's good to go. If you wanna see all the virtual machines that are being managed, so because what Vagrant is, is just a way for you to manage multiple virtual machines through the command line interface. So if I do Vagrant global status, I'm gonna be able to see all the machines that are running. And in this case, the only machine that I have is the demo one. Cool, so now if I go to the browser and I access demo dot, well, no, it's a uh, homestead dot demo. Oh, is it trying to go with SSL? Yeah, I don't want that. I just want to HTTP. And there we go. We, we have the website working through that. Um, so I, I forgot to run migrations and just gonna go to the environment over here. And this, so the username to connect to the database, if you're using Homestead, is gonna be Homestead. The password is secret. And I like to, to keep the host being the homestead.demo because then I can also run the PHP arts on migrate from my host machine and it's still gonna work. Like I, I don't need to actually SSH into Vagrant to do this. So I'm just gonna do, or it's on migrate dash dash seed and everything worked fine. So if I go to this website over here and I log in as user example, it still works. So again, like an advantage of using Homestead or sale is that you don't have to have those services in your machine to be able to host that project, right? So it's it's really useful if you're if you have like a large team and you're enforcing 
an environment by having this like that. Like all the requirements for that application to run is in one place and everyone is gonna be running over the same configuration. Okay, but how do you serve via SSL using Homestead? So this is pretty awesome. This is actually a thing that uh, I've learned on the job. Like we, we needed to have secure connection because we needed access to the camera and we explored on that together. And the solution that we found out is that if you, if you take a look at, uh, if you SSH into that uh, Vagrant, uh, that Vagrant machine, you're gonna see that under your Nginx configuration, you, you're gonna have like the configuration for your website, of course. And if you take a look at that, you're gonna see that Vagrant is already listening for both uh, port 80 and port 443. So it looks like it's set to go to work with uh, SSL. That's neat. So where, where is the certificate? If you scroll down over here, you're gonna see the location of the certificate right here. So the public certificate is this one, and that's all we need. Because what we want to do is we wanna configure our system to trust the public certificate that Homestead is using to serve that website. So what I'm gonna do is my, my host machine cannot access the ATC uh, folder in Homestead. So what I like to do is I just copy the certificate into a place that my host machine can access. And what place is this? If you take a look at the Homestead YAML, one of the configurations in here is path mapping. So we're mapping our demo folder into home Vagrant code. So this is all we need to know. So going back to Vagrant, I'm just gonna quit this and I'm gonna copy this thing over here into um, home Vagrant code. So now I should see the certificate right here, right? So now I, I have full access to the public certificate that Homestead is using. So now let's let's enable, like let's trust the certificate in our system. So what I'm gonna do is open this in Finder. So if you're using Mac, you just double click on this guy. Uh, you're gonna be prompt to go to the keychain. And there you go, the certificate is added there. By, by default, uh, because the certificate is not like, it's not from like a trusted authority, uh, things are not gonna be trusted. Like your, your website, is, your SSL is still going to fail. So what you wanna do, you, you wanna override the trust options in your system to just be always trust. And there you go. So now your, your computer will be trusting the certificate that is being used by Homestead. So now if I go to this website over here and I change this to HTTPS, there you go. I have secure connection and that connection is being hosted through my virtual machine that was created with Homestead. And again, like I just wanna really hit on that key, like how easy that was, man. Like it's, uh, the, the tools that they are offering us, it's like makes, they, they make our life so much easier, like just like that. I absolutely love this. Um, living the dream. <laughs> All right, so this is pretty much, let's just gonna go back to the slides to make sure. Uh, yeah, yeah, so th this is pretty much what I wanted to talk about uh, in regards to Homestead. All right, so this last part is the one that, um, that I wanna explain like, in more details because Laravel SEO is kind of like the brand new feature that we're having now. It's the, um, and all it is is just the Homestead equivalent for Docker containers. I, I do believe there is one question in the chat. Before oh, you, there's a question. No. Oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, what is the question? Uh, it was also answered, but it was, what is the SSL cert that is generated? Is it self-signed? Oh, okay. Self-signed. Cool. And then it was answered. Yes, it's self-signed. That's why you have to manually import it into the keychain and trust it. Nice. I, not so much a question, Philippe, but more of a comment. Uh, uh -huh. so one of the things that uh, you were talking about, like we've, we've talked about with Artisan, we've talked about with Valet, 
not sharing with um, like sharing with outside people, like using Ngrok and, and Valet Share. Mm-hmm. So I I was curious if there was an option to share your like your homestead environment with people on the outside. Uh, there is. I have done that before, and I think all you need to do is you ha- you need to add a special flag for host, right? Uh, so I haven't used any Grok in a long time. That's why I'm kind of like struggling with this. Well, I, actually, do you remember? I'm looking at the documentation. So it seems that it says that in order to solve this problem, Homestead includes a share command. What? So, yeah. So what you, what, apparently what you have to do is you, you get you SSH into the Vagrant box and execute share. And then you would, you would run. Um, oh, yeah, you right would, there. So then you would run share and I guess homestead.demo. Oh, okay. So I need to be in the home Vagrant then. Yeah. Share, and then homestead. homestead.demo, I guess. Yeah. And then I guess, and there it is. And then the command will share the homestead.test site from your homestead.yaml configuration file. You may substitute any other configured sites for that. After the run of the command, you will see ngrok screen appear, which contains an activity log and publicly available uh, accessible URLs for the shared site. And so that's basic. So now I guess you can go there and then and hit it, and it should give it to you. Does Let's- it? I guess it's not getting the CSS. Oh, it's the same way? Oh, oh, no, that's okay. That's okay. That's that's an error that it's common. Like, you just double click on this guy. Like, if you open this in a new tab. Yeah. Uh, oh, man. No, I thought it was the thing that would say, like, I don't trust this. Uh, no, the problem is when you have mixed content with HTTPS and HTTP, on an HTTPS page, you the browser will not load any HTTP content. And that's the problem uh, here. It's just... Yeah, so just use ngrok's HTTP link instead of the HTTPS. Yeah. Nice. Wow. Okay. Cool. Thanks, guys. That's cool. So, okay, that makes sense, right? Like, if you're using HTTPS, like as soon as you start having HTTP coming in, yeah. Okay. You don't want to have awesome. unsecure stuff. You can set up your your the Laravel site to serve without having to worry about HTTP or HTTPS. It'll just use the the protocol that it's been accessed with. So. Interesting. I, I think I ran into this the other day and I, I haven't dug it all yet, but I, cause ngrok, from what I understand, ngrok can only tunnel to an HTTPS connection on your machine if you're using a paid, uh, like a paid account with them. So when you look at your ngrok HTTPS connection, it actually forwards to HTTP localhost. And then from what I was seeing the other day, Laravel, like the Laravel application seems to detect that is I'm not on a secure connection. So when I feed everything back, it was giving me an absolute URL based on the host, but with the wrong protocol. And I could be crazy about what I was seeing, but I, I was seeing something along those lines. And when I that tried to do a share to the, what's that? Makes perfect sense what you're saying. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Craziness does happen, but I did see this the other day because I was trying to do a valet site that was secured and trying to share it through ngrok, but it wasn't letting me through, and then the browser was getting really confused about things. Interesting. I don't know. Huh. <laughs> and uh, just out of curiosity, like the, the thing that um, you were mentioning earlier, Nuno, in regards to letting Laravel like solve that for me, is there just like an environment flag that I flip, or? Sorry, you're... Um, like when you mentioned that this thing over here didn't work because we have HTTP coming in as well, right? Uh, I think if I understood you right, you mentioned that there is a way for us to let this happen. Like yeah, to... I, I can't remember off the top of my head, but yeah, there is. Okay, cool. That, that, Sorry, that's... I can look it up for you. Uh, no, no, don't, don't worry. That's okay. I was just wondering if you knew on top of your head because then I would just try it out right here. Um, yeah, this is pretty cool. I didn't know about uh, Homestead Share. So that is that is awesome. Thanks, thanks, Colin as well, and thanks, Lucas as well. No um, cool. So now what I'm gonna do is start the the Laravel SEO part. So I'm just gonna quickly clean up things. Just destroy that. Yep. It's okay, and I'm just gonna do a git clean. G, also get reset hard. 
get rid of the homes.yaml file. And okay, so we're in a clean stage to continue for our Laravel sale part. Okay, so just to set up Laravel sale, just gonna go over here, just make sure that, yeah, okay, we go straight into setup. So to set up Laravel sale, this is the thing that I think it's pretty awesome. You just run Compose require dev, Laravel sale, and then PHP Adson uh, sale install. And to tie to this, I really wanna give a shout out like to everyone that is collaborating with like this Laravel framework because it's so many, like this, this pattern of like setting up systems is showing up more and more. And I really appreciate that. So if you want to install Sail, Breeze, Dusk, and I'm sure many other packages, you follow the same pattern of Composer require the name of the package, and then PHP Artisan, the name of the package install. Sail is one of those. So all I'm going to do is go back in here, Composer require, Laravel sail, setting up that, and then PHP Artisan sail install. And there we go, we should be good to go with sail. And what, what happens in here? You can see that now we have this Docker Compose YAML in, in our project folder. And what this is doing is setting up uh, multiple services, right? So um, it, it's ready to go for MySQL. Uh, this over here is the one that's gonna be serving the PHP uh, and also serving the app as a whole. We, we're gonna go into more details on this guy like pretty soon. Uh, you can see that you can enable Postgres if you want to. Comes with Redis from the get-go. You can, it like, comes with Mailhog, Memcached, and okay. So that's good. And everything that this thing is, this container is gonna be doing is going to be set up based on your environment variables. So for example, your database that's gonna be generated, it already is going to, to be the one that is defined in your environment. So if we take a look in our .env, I just wanna make sure that uh, everything is okay. So yeah, so the, the database is gonna be called demo. The username is gonna be homestead. The password is gonna be secret. But now a thing to keep in mind is the host. Because we're using Docker in here and for, for those that are not like totally accustomed to Docker. So Docker is kind of new to me as well. And if I make any mistakes like Feel free to correct me, guys. I, I, I really won't mind. I actually appreciate any sort of corrections. But if you, if you don't specify networks in your Docker Compose, what's going to happen is that Docker is going to create a network with some gibberish name, and it's going to throw all those services that you're defining. So all those containers are going to be in the same network. And what happens when you have that going is that you can, you can refer to a, to a container by just using their name. So in here, this, this service over here is MySQL and that's gonna spin up a container that's gonna have like a similar name in here. But yeah, you can just, I can use just the name of the service in here and this connection is gonna work just fine. As long as the, as that the thing that is trying to access it is in the same network. In the case of this Docker Composing here, you can see that the Laravel test container, which is the one that is gonna be trying to talk to MySQL when the app is running, is in the network called Sail, which happens to be the same network that the MySQL container is running as well. That's it, okay? So with everything configured, I should be good to run Sail up. Um, if you're used with Docker, you know that like, if you do Docker Compose up, um, it's going to start spinning up the containers and it's going to take over your terminal, right? And if you don't want that to happen, you can run that in detached mode, which is by adding the dash D flag. And that's what I'm gonna do here. So I'm just gonna do sail up dash D. And okay, so it's spinning up. I had the, the images pre-downloaded and like things were ready to go just to save time during the presentation. But you can see that now we should have the containers running. I actually need to exit presentation mode real quick, just to show you on the dashboard for Docker, you're gonna be able to see that all the containers are running right now. And if you take a look in here in this Docker Compose, um, the, the, the port that, that we're exposing is port 80. And the reason behind this is that if we take a look 
at the the the, the container, like the, the the thing that is generated, like the Docker file, right? Like the, the the what a Docker file is is kind of like the plans to create the image. So the the image that we're going to be using to create this container over here, the service over here, is being defined over here. And if you take a look at the supervisor configuration, you're going to see that to serve the website to people on the outside, we're actually running PHP Artisan Serve. And we're specifying over here the port of 80. I, I want you to make use of the segue as well to kind of ask a question to everyone here, which is when, like, I, I ask help for, for friends as well, like, uh, Colin uh, and Grant like helped me go over this this file together, and this this expose thing over here is still pointed to port eight thousand, and I'm wondering if this is a mistake. If if like at one point we were just using PHP artisan serve without specifying the port, which defaults to eight thousand, and that's why we have this expose eight thousand in here, but based yeah. on the the new value, it should be eighty. Is that right? Yes, the expose is basically saying that this is the port that can be communicated on. If you don't put anything in there, you can't do anything with that container. It's essentially um, dumb. Mm -hmm. So there's no way of talking to it. So anytime you want to speak, you want to be able to communicate on any particular port, you have to expose it. But so if that's if... eight, so that's eight thousand or eighty eighty or eighty or four four three or whatever, you'd have to actually have a list of expose and whichever ports. And it's important that that expose is the port on the docker network that you have defined it is not the port you would access from um your local machine so but that's, like that's then configured through uh the ports mapping um which you had on the the image at the top of your uh, test so, so this 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 uh, ports the thing at the front where it says app port 80 that's the local port and mm -hmm. it says it's saying uh, any data on this port should be forwarded to port 80 of this container. Yeah, so like, so doesn't that mean that this is a typo and this should be Yes, 80? that should be 80. Okay. Yeah, that, that, that's the thing that I was wondering, right? Like, because we have like 8,000 in here. Cool, all right, thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate that, Dave. Um, okay, so, so yeah, I guess maybe Maybe you could try opening a PR for that. That's that's cool. Um, but all right, so going going back to this, we, we have the containers running. So now if I go to localhost, we should see the app being served there. Oh, and before we actually do that, I'm just wanna, I, I wanna run my migrations. So to run the migrations, I can do sail artisan migrate dash dash seed. And there we go, we should be good to go. So we're just gonna go to localhost and you can see that the website is working. Cool. Okay, so um, uh, I think to keep in mind as well, so just gonna go to the slides over here real quick. Is that, so we just finished this part, right? But uh, I think to keep in mind is that Laravel sale it starts using PHP version eight, but if you do want to use another version of PHP, you can see over here that there is two versions being supported at this point. You can either use eight or seven four. If you do, if you do want to use seven four, all you need to do is just change this guy over here to seven four, and then you're gonna have to run sale build no cache, and then you do sale up, and you should be good to go. It's gonna be serving your application with 7.4. This takes a while though, so I'm not gonna do this in this in this presentation. That's pretty much the idea behind it. And now a thing that I think it's interesting because like since SAO is tailored to be for local like development is that Xdebug is not ready to go at this point. But um, if you do want to enable Xdebug in SAO, uh, there is one way that I'm gonna be showing here, but if anyone else knows like of other ways, please let me know. I would love to learn another way to do this. But ideally, what I, what I would want you to do is I would, I would want to go to this Docker file in here and I wanted to add the 
the command to install xdebug, right? Like right after installing PHP, and I could just do this right here, right? So just run, backhoe, install xdebug. But this is in the vendor folder, so I don't want to modify this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this folder into my, I'm just going to create a folder in here called Docker. Oh, dash R. And okay, so, and I'm gonna reference my Docker folder. And now I have full control over it. So if I go to the Docker file, I'm going to be able to do that, that the thing that I want. So I'm just gonna go right here and I'm gonna do run, backhoe, install xdebug. And now we're gonna have xdebug in, in our uh, container. So to, to account for this though, we're gonna have to rebuild this uh, this image. So I'm gonna do that command that I was mentioning before. So sale build dash dash no cache. This is running and this is gonna take a while. So while this thing is happening, I, I want you to just show how we can configure PHP Storm to run those tests through uh, the Docker container. So because like I know a lot of people here do use uh, uh, PHP Storm for their development. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna delete this. Yep, that's fine. I'm gonna do everything from scratch. And okay, so first things first, we wanna add a CLI interpreter that points to our uh, Docker um, container. So I'm just gonna say from Docker, point to a Docker Compose, and it's gonna be this one over here, and it's gonna be the Laravel test one. Press okay. That's cool. So, and you can see over here, it's PHP version eight, and we don't have Xdebug installed at this point. Um, just gonna wait. For now, I'm just gonna press okay. Oh, and you know what, like, a naming standard that I that I like to do in here, it's uh, it's actually a thing that I got from Grant. <laughs> that uh, it's uh, I'm gonna say PHP 8.0 dot at Docker, or like I could say like at uh, Laravel test Docker. Uh, press OK. It, it also shows in here the version, but I, I do I do like to have the name like this as well. It's, it makes it more readable. And it's still going. This this does take a while, but that's okay. We can we can continue this in here. So I've set up the CLI interpreter for, from the Docker, and now I want to set the test framework. So again, like I want to remove that in that. So I'm just gonna do yeah, it's gonna run PHP unit through a remote interpreter, which is this one over here. Press OK. And okay, we're, we're good to go on that end as well. So we have our test framework ready to go. And now I'm just gonna open like whatever test. So I'm just gonna say example test. I'm gonna run this test over here. Um, oh, and just making sure that I have the proper, yeah, CLI interpreter selected. So if I run this test, and you can see that it is creating like a, a runner container um, and running the test through there. So the test is running through Docker at this point. But um, debug is it still not enabled at this point because we don't have xdebug. So as soon as this thing over here finishes, which, okay, it just finished. Now, Docker is really smart. It actually knows if you changed your Docker Compose. So as soon as I run, um, so it would be Docker Compose up, but I'm just gonna do like sale up. And you're gonna see that it's going to rebuild our Laravel test um, container. So you can see recreating Laravel test and all the other containers were up to date. So we didn't need to do anything else. I'm just gonna wait, that should be pretty fast. And okay, so now at this point, we should be able to select uh, uh, attach xdebug to this thing. So I'm just gonna go to debugger extension. I'm gonna mention xdebug.so. And if I press update in here, we have xdebug ready to go. 
And from this point on, breakpoints should be enabled for your project. So this breakpoint over here should be, there we go. You can see that the bug is working. So if I press FH, I'm going to step, option FH opens the, the expression calculator thing, and I can do response, dump, or whatever. Like, yeah, just so we, we can debug now with the running through Laravel sale. So I, I, I know I kind of spend a lot of time talking about this, but I, I do, I like using breakpoints a lot. That's why I think um, this would be of value to at least one person here. So that's why I thought it would be good to share. Uh, I'm gonna stop this now. Um, and yeah, so this is how I set up XDebug. Another advantage of Laravel sale is that it has a very easy integration with Laravel Dusk. And look at that, like Dusk installs just like Laravel sale does. So I'm just gonna go back to the terminal and I'm gonna do composer require dev Laravel Dusk. So take this out. And then PHP artisan, oh, you know what? I, I could have run this through sale. Like I, I, I could say uh, sale artisan and then Dusk install. Oh, and by the way, like this, this whole sale artisan thing, I think it's pretty sweet. Like it's, it's a nice, it's a nice abstraction over the Docker commands because like, just like I can do like the, the sale shell and I'm gonna SSH into that Docker container. But how does, how do these commands work? Uh, so what we need to look in here is at the sale file itself. So if I open vendor bin sale, you're gonna see that what's going on in here. So I'm just gonna give some more real stage for us. So I'm not gonna worry too much about this setup in here, but um, if you take a look at this chunk, so online 63 is where like the work starts happening. And uh, if anyone is not like familiar with bash, like all this is doing is just checking to see if the number of arguments is greater than zero, which means that you're running sale and something else coming afterwards. So I could say like sale up or sale PHP, whatever, right? So that's, that's how it's checking. We have more than one argument being passed. What's going to happen? We load the environment variables from the env, and then we say, hey, is the first argument PHP? Because if the first argument is PHP, what I want you to do is, so this shift over here, I, I don't wanna get into much of this, but what this shift over here is doing is discarding the first argument. So because like at this point, we know the first argument is PHP, so they are discarding the first argument. And then they're saying, run Docker compose exec. Um, if this over here just, just says that like, I wanna execute that command as the user called sale inside of that container instead of root. And then I'm pointing to the container that is running the app. And then you can see over here that we have PHP prefaced. As far as I know, I think you can get rid of the shift over here and you could just do the dollar sign at symbol. But I think I think the decision to have this shift over here was to increase readability right? because now it's like explicit that we're running PHP followed by everything everything else. So if you if you typed PHP artisan, Artisan is going to be passed to online 77 as well. But they also have uh, comments for Artisan and you can see over here, you can either type sale Artisan or sale Arch. And again, it's an exec command that's going to run PHP Artisan inside of that container. Composer, exec command, running Composer in there. And if you take a look at uh, Dusk, it's going to set some more environment variables. And then it's going to run the exec command with PHP Artisan Dusk, uh, Tinker, um, NPM, so it's it's just like all those sales commands. Most of, of most of them are simplifications for the Docker Compose exact command, right? Like if, if you wanna SSH into the thing, you would be able to do like. So I'm just gonna do like Docker PS. You can you can use the container name or you can use the part of the container ID. I'm just gonna do this. So I could say, is this the app? This is yeah. So I could say Docker uh, Compose. Oh, the Docker exec. No, it's Docker compose uh, exec uh, dash it this guy being bash. 
Uh, oh, it's just Docker. Yeah, and there we go. I, I, I've accessed the, the container uh, through the terminal. But in SAO, I could just do SAO uh, root shell, and that's going to achieve the same goal. So it's really nice how they, they have like those simplifications to the command line interface on how you can interact with the containers. Um, cool. So that that thing is is ready to go. Uh, Dusk is good. It's all spinned up. So, so what what I want to do now is uh, if we go to the Docker Compose, since we're going to be using Laravel Dusk now, what we're going to want to enable is the Selenium uh, container. So I'm just going to go over here, enable the Selenium container. And I think that's going to be it. Yep, everything else is good. So again, because we did a modification, I'm just going to do say up again. It's going to build that Selenium container for us. And at this point, we should be good to run our test. And as we saw in that bash script, to run the tests, we just do sail dusk. Um, and cool. OK, so, th so the test failed. And if we take a look at the test, uh, dusk test, oh, I opened the wrong one. So I'm just going to go browser, example test. Oh, you know what? I, I don't remember if I ran the migrations actually. So I'm just going to do say artisan migrate. I'm going to do a fresh just to be safe. And okay. And I'll say a dusk. Hmm. Oh, okay. Is yeah, that's right. Because, because I praise. actually. Uh, yeah, um, I, ch I changed the page to instead of being their home page, it's just the login page. My bad, I forgot about that. So it's good. We're actually failing because it makes sense. So I, um, <laughs> just before the presentation began, uh, I had the regular Laravel page showing up. And then I felt like, you know what, I'm just going to change this to just be in the login page. And I forgot about this chunk of the presentation. <laughs> but yeah, that's so it's it's good because we can see the failing test and we can check the screenshot and you're gonna see oh yeah I forgot about that it's the logging page it's not it's no longer the Laravel docs page so cool so we <laughs> we failed the test it made sense make, let's make this test pass so real quick I'm just gonna say like user and I'm gonna um, let's just find the first user and then in here I'm just gonna uh, oh, it's, it's from the browser. So I'm just going to say login as that user. Um, instead of doing the using here, I'm just going to pass this to here. Um, visit the dashboard. And I, as, I hope that I'm going to see my name showing up there. And that's it. Like just a very simple test. And if I do say all dusk, that test should pass. Cool. And there you go. So full integration with Laravel sale from the get go. That's pretty sweet. Um, a thing that I would like to ask if anyone knows is that at, at this point, the, the Dusk tests are actually using the same database as your local development environment. You can, like, if, if, you, if you have experience with Dusk, Dusk, you know that you can create another environment over here with .dusk where you can point to another database. So I'm gonna say like, in here, but I, I was wondering, so I haven't checked, like I, I, um, I, I haven't had the time to actually look into this. So hopefully there is an easy way to, to set this up, but uh, on the MySQL thing, how we can set up two databases in one go, or if we're gonna have to do some other script that runs afterwards to set up the second database. But that's pretty much it on this end. I don't know if anyone has ideas in regards to that? Uh, as far as I'm aware, you would need to use uh, SQL init script. Um, I believe that um, there should be, uh, since using the official image, there should be like an init SQL or um, uh, what else might they call it? I can't remember. Postgres has it. 
and it will just it just copies across any scripts that you put in there and just runs them, but only the very first time when the container is created. Um, as far as like creating multiple DBs, I'm I'm not aware of it because the environment variables are all set up to build just one. So at that mm-hmm. point, you would have to actually step through the houses. Of course, if since you're using Docker, just copy and duplicate MySQL and then just call it MySQL dash test, then it's running as a completely separate instance. You, know, you don't even need uh-huh. to bother with multiple DBs in, in one thing. In fact, that would be the Docker way, would be just run another MySQL instance as opposed to create another database. That's okay. Yeah, that's... Uh... I, that that's one one of the suggestions that I did, did hear as well. That's that's awesome. Okay, so so you you would also then just spin like a, a second container with that for another that, DB. Yeah, yeah. I uh, currently run with uh, four or five databases, and they're all separate Postgres images. I don't bother with multiple DBs in one. When we deploy to prod, we're not using containers, so it's all just running off a standard um, single. Uh, DB server instance, but that's prod. And in dev, it's just, it's easier just to have individual um, instances that you can uh, turn off and on as and when you need them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cool. Yeah, that, 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 makes, that makes total sense. Cool. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Hey, uh, Philippe. Yep. Not so much a question, but more of a comment. Uh, so we've talked about sharing the site. And I, I was like, can we share the, can we share the sales site? Of course we, we can, we can. And I, I actually have a part for that that are oh, pretty puffed. Sorry, yeah. I apologize. So the, the dusk, the, the sale one is pretty awesome because uh, you, you can actually specify the domain name, like the yeah. subdomain name. So I, I can just say like a sale share subdomain. And then you can just mention like, hello, Gpug. And it gives a pretty cool URL for you. So you can see like it's serving on hellogbug.laravelsale.site. Just before the presentation is started, I tried doing that and the thing was like offline, but I want to see if it's going to work now. Yeah, it's hanging again. Like I tried this yesterday and it didn't hang, but today it was hanging. Like I don't know why. But yeah, ideally this this should be serving our one website, but it's it's gonna hang in here for a while and then it's gonna say that this service is not running. So this share is not using ngrok, it's using expose by Beyond Code. And so and their main server for this is across the pond. So there's some delays as well in terms of latency. So that might be also part of the issue. Oh. But, uh, it, you should have something by now in terms of responses. Yeah. Yeah, the, that's yeah, that's pretty interesting, right? Like, I'm gonna be leaving this in here, but yeah, that's yeah, like like, like you're saying, Chris. Like when when I tried this yesterday, it, it did load. It it didn't take this long to, to load the page. So I think that must be something happening today that's preventing that. Yeah, but so that this would be the the way to 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 share this. Um, another thing that I want to mention as well before like we start going to the conclusions is that in regards to the installation of uh, um, Xdebug, because uh, because Laravel SEO is using Ubuntu for the image of the app, what you could do as well instead of doing the run pack on install is you could use the apt get and just get the the binary file right away. I haven't tried that, but uh, that's uh, that's a possibility of like, it, it would allow you to install xdebug faster. So it would just be like apt get install php xdebug. That's uh, an alternative way as well because we're using Ubuntu. Um, yeah, okay, so let's go over here. So a few things to keep in mind in regards to sale is that as, as we saw before, like it's serving this over P, uh, PHP Artisan, which means as like Colin was helping me understand this better like yesterday, is that like it's it's only gonna possibly like probably it's only gonna accept a single connection. Um, it's, um, so, and be, so because it's only handling a single connection at a time, it's you shouldn't be using your SAO containers to deploy to production. If, if you do want to deploy things to production, you should probably spin up another container that just runs Nginx or something that's going to actually handle the web requests and redirect to your, to your application, right? 
But um, yeah, that's uh, pretty much it for this. The, does anyone have any other like comments in regards to Laravel sale before I start going over the conclusions? Uh, the when you're running it, uh, the artisan command is actually running the built-in um, PHP web server under the hood. Uh, so it can support a few connections, but yeah, you definitely don't want to run that in prod. You'd want to switch to FPM um, or a Roadrunner or PHP PM to actually run the app. Otherwise, mm. you're going to have issues. Oh, so, so, so Dave, like what are you saying that if I want to serve that in production, I, I, I don't need to have a container that's going to run like Apache or Nginx. I can actually still keep serving that through just PHP. And that would still be valid. Well, yeah, you could, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't use the PHP's built-in. It's only meant for testing, not for prod deploys. So okay, you'd need yeah. to you'd need to um, switch to FPM, um, PHP FPM, or PHP PM, which is PHP's process manager uh, project um, instead. And then you'd yeah, you'd stick Nginx or Apache over the front of that. To access nice. the load balance and proxy. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Thanks. A couple of conclusions in regards to all those four different services. Um, an advantage of uh, using Artisan is because it's literally zero, zero setup, but the, the advantages is that it's relatively more difficult to set up SSL and uh, your host machine needs to have all the services running inside of it. Uh, Valet makes it way easier to set up HTTPS, but and it also comes with a nice visualization of all the sites that Valet is managing. It has an out of the box and CROC integration, but the problem with Valet is that it um, it leaves lasting effects on your system. I and mean, what I mean by that is that Valet is going to be doing stuff on your computer even when you're not developing. Of course, you can always just run Valet stop and kind of like get rid of those effects. But my point is that Valet is going to be installing things in there that are going to work beyond your project. Um, Homestead is another good alternative as well, just like the other two before. It makes HTTPS configuration simple. It's not as easy as Valet, but it does allow quick HTTPS connection in there. And just like the sales side, everything that you need is gonna be in one place. Your host machine doesn't need to know anything. And But the problem with Homestead is because you're using virtual machines, the downloads are larger, the setup is lengthier, like you to, to, so you can get Homestead started. So that's those are like downsides that I can see in there. And on the point of sale, I honestly, I really like it. It's it's a really nice way for you to get going with uh, Docker containers in your Laravel project from the get go. Makes makes life so much easy, easier. It also it's very efficient in regards to customization, and it it has really nice integration with Dusk. Like you you guys could see how easy it was to run those Dusk tests and set those up. So we could have a system with end-to-end -end tests like that. It's it's really nice. I really appreciate the effort behind everyone that has worked on these testing environments. And again, like the key that I want to hit on though is that unlike other like Docker environments that people set up for development, like you don't don't use the the sale approach without modifications to deploy for production. It's not recommended. This so this is slides. So I'm not an artistic person and, and I have a really hard time organizing slides. So what I did is I downloaded a template and I just added my content on top of it. And so I just want to give credits to Slides Carnival for that. And the person that made this this template is Jimena Catalina. And yeah, that, that's it. Like uh that's, thanks, thanks for having me, guys. That's really appreciate that. Thank you. I can't clap and then meet at the same time. <laughs> Good job, Philippe. Yes, thanks, Thank Philippe. You. That was awesome. So that, that ends the, the meeting.